uh, Nate, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so welcome for those of you who are just joining us for the first time in one of our uh, Monday evening paint classes. And for those of you, um, and as Nate said, I recognize a lot of faces I can already see on our view here. So welcome back for those of you who have painted with us before. So it's a treat tonight because uh, Emma is going to be taking us through the 3D tropical florals and it's a fun painting and it's got this cool 3D element to it, which she will explain when the right time comes. Um, as uh, was mentioned, the class is being recorded and you can see there Nate has uh, listed the supplies, but also you guys know, I think by now where to go and see the recordings. So you can go to Michael's um, website and see them, or you can also look on their on their YouTube channel. So if you feel like you're getting behind or you, the pace is just too much and you'd rather just relax and watch tonight, please do that and then go back and, and paint in your own time where you can follow along and, and pause the recording and all that sort of stuff. So um, I don't wanna keep us any longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Emma and she'll get started. All right, awesome, John. So thanks for that amazing introduction. Like John said, tonight we'll be painting tropical 3D florals. I am super duper excited to teach you guys how to uh, paint this tonight. I just want to say too that this is not my original artwork. As you can see, the lovely and very talented Kirsten Jones created this piece of art and she had a last minute uh, leisure vacation that she wanted to go to. So I am filling in for Kirsten tonight. So I hope I do her justice. Um, I'm super excited to be here. And let's get started. First, we'll go over every single supply that you'll need to follow along with me tonight. And just like always, if you have any questions, if you don't have something at home and you want a recommendation on maybe something else that could work that you do have at home, then always feel free to put that in the chat and uh, John can answer that or relay that to me. So you are going to need a canvas, a stretched canvas. This one that we called for is an 11 by 14. So that's the ideal size. We want a rectangle canvas because our shape is a more oblong uh, shape. So we want a rectangle canvas as opposed to a square, but really any canvas will do. If you wanna make kind of a shorter vase, that's totally fine, it's up to you. So you're gonna need your canvas. Next, you're gonna need, of course, your lovely folk art paint. So tonight we are working with folk art wicker white of pistachio, midnight, fire coral, clover, ocean view, aqua, and yellow ochre. I was so close. I thought I remembered them all. I didn't remember the aqua. You're going to need um, some brushes. So tonight we are going to do a lot of dry brushing and, and it's okay if you don't know what that means. We're gonna explain what that means, but you're gonna do some dry brushing. And that means you're going to need quite a few uh, flat brushes because we want our brushes to stay dry throughout. So when we switch our colors, we don't wanna dip it in the water and then take it back out again and switch to a different color because then our brush will be wet. So right here, I am working with a uh, large flat brush, a couple of uh, little bit smaller flat brushes like one inch flat brushes I have four here um, about a half inch flat brush and a tiny flat brush and a round brush and a liner brush um, but if you do not have that many brushes then that's totally fine you'll of course be able to paint along tonight but that will be ideal if you had that Next, you're going to need either a pencil or some chalk. So uh, chalk will probably be your better bet for tonight, but a pencil will work just fine if you don't have any chalk. And it doesn't matter the color chalk that you use because we're gonna wipe it off um, through, through our painting tonight. Uh, and then of course, you're gonna need your beautiful faux florals. So Michaels has a crazy awesome selection of faux florals in their stores. So the fun part about this painting is once you're done, if you haven't gathered your florals yet, you can paint your vase however you like, and then you can take a trip to Michael's and pick out your uh, 3D florals to add to your painting. And of course, I'm gonna show you guys how to secure that in your um, canvas later. And like I said, if you don't have your faux florals right now, you can always go back to one of our other paint nights on Michael's YouTube page and learn how to paint some flowers because unfortunately we won't have time to do that tonight. Or you can take a trip to Michael's at a later date and um, then add that, add those florals to your artwork. Okay, let's get started. So first thing we are going to add to our palette tonight is, drum roll, just kidding, is Midnight. And we're going to put quite a bit because we are going to base coat our entire canvas in midnight. And um, you can really tell this is a Kirsten original. If you've ever painted with Kirsten before, you'll know that sometimes she likes to undercoat 
her paintings um, to give it some more depth and interest. So nothing fancy, we are just going to paint our entire canvas with Folk Art Midnight. And I did see that comment. Um, if you don't have midnight tonight, you can really use any dark color you like. So if maybe you have a navy, of course, that would be great. Any dark blue would be great. Any dark green would be great, um, like a thicket. Any dark purple would be great, like an eggplant. Whatever dark, cool tone color you have will be a great substitution for midnight. or black, I see that comment too. Black works fine too, great idea. So Emma, why do you paint a background if you're then just gonna paint over it? That's a great question, John. So some of these areas we're actually gonna be mindful of and try to keep some of these areas unpainted. Um, that really just adds some interest and depth into our painting and it um, in it it's kind of one of the situations where we're working uh, smarter, not harder. So we won't have to uh, you know paint as many strokes later to add some dimension and add some you know faux shadows and highlights because it'll look more interesting because we'll get some of that uh, dark blue coming through our painting. Cool. Instead of having to like work around each little shape and so on, you just have it already down there in the back. Exactly, yeah. So this is a, I love this technique and Kirsten um, does this technique quite a lot in her paintings. So nothing fancy you guys, we're just slopping some paint on. Make sure that we cover our entire canvas here. Emma forgot to line her table, it says. Emma, yes, don't did. get you paint just... on the table. I know. Um, yes, I'm gonna get in trouble if I get paint on this table. Not actually, but um, my coworker would not be happy with me. Right. He's coming back from vacation just to find that you've painted on the table. Then what? I know, he works really hard to keep these tables clean and looking pretty, so I definitely don't wanna mess it up for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the one um, circumstance during our painting tonight where we are not gonna worry about getting our brush wet. So I'm going to dip my brush in my water basin because we're done with this brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to blow dry my canvas so that it's nice and dry for when we add our next step.
Okay, so now that our canvas is nice and dry, if you guys are just now tuning in, all we did so far is paint our 11 by 14 stretched canvas with Folk Art Midnight. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our next step. This is where our pencil or our chalk comes in. So I prefer to use chalk just because I feel like I can see it a bit better. But I feel like chalk is not one of those things that everybody just has readily available at home. So um, a pencil will work just fine. You can always just erase it later. And also this step is totally optional, but this is just a great thing to do in any of your paintings um, to kind of do a little sketch in the beginning of what you'll be painting so you know where your shapes are going to fall so that you can really work around it, work around it and make your painting look the best that it can. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our horizon line. Okay, so kind of like where our vase is going to sit on our table. And just to give it a little bit of interest, instead of making it a straight line going parallel across our canvas, we're going to make it a little bit slanted. So I'm going to start maybe maybe like, uh, you know, two and a half inches here, and I'm just going to ever so slightly make an incline going here. Okay, with my chalk. All right, so now that we have that one chalk line, we're gonna go ahead and sketch out our vase. And we're going to uh, you know, be mindful, we're gonna go a little bit below our horizon line. So what we're gonna do is we're kind of gonna make a big U like that, okay? And if you're not too pleased with your very first line, you can go ahead and kind of adjust it to how you like it. And now we're gonna kind of curve the top of it, making the top of our vase, and go up on each side. Go up, try to smooth it out and make it, that's not very symmetrical, make it symmetrical. Okay, and now we're gonna close our vase and just make a straight line. So that's all you do for that step. We're just outlining our vase. And once you've done that, now we are going to pay attention to our fire coral and our titanium white. And we're gonna add both of those colors onto our palette. Somebody had asked earlier if they didn't have fire coral, what they could do with that. So with different- so, Yeah. Um, you could use like some apple red and some of your wicker white that you have already. Um, and just keep in mind too, so this is what it looks like at the end. And our fire coral color is gonna make up our beautiful table. You can see this really cute corally color. But if you don't have that color, you can make this color anything. You can make it purple, you can make it lime green, you can make it yellow. It's totally up to you. You can always just work around what you have at home. So if you don't have fire coral for this painting, the only thing that is truly organic is going to be our green leaves, our green cute little pond leaves. So if you don't have fire coral or aqua, just use whatever you have at home and you can get creative. I just see somebody ask me to see the final product of what we're painting tonight. So this is what we're painting tonight. All right, so we are going to take one of our flat brushes and we are going to apply a little bit of our fire coral onto our brush, like that much. And I'm gonna offload just by going back and forth onto my palette because we don't want quite as much paint as we got when we applied the paint to our brush initially. We don't want that much paint on our brush because we're going to do a, bra a dry brushing technique. And so we don't want that much paint on our brush. And with that, we are going to make a sloppy cross pattern like this. So we're going down, we're going down and back like this. Okay, applying more paint if we need it, just sloppily going this and that and this and that, just whatever feels right. Okay, and we're just going to work around our chalk lines. Okay, so you can make little swoops around your vase if you like that look. 
But one thing that we're gonna be mindful of is that we want to keep some of this uh, midnight color showing because as you can see in our final painting, that really gives our painting a lot of uh, depth and dimension. I like the midnight showing. So we're gonna try to be mindful and keep some of that space open because this just plain fire coral is not the only color that's gonna go on our table, okay? So you don't have to fill it all up just at first. We're just adding, you know, kind of layers almost of this paint. And we're gonna get some of the edges just by kind of dragging our brush off the edge. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the same thing that we just did with our fire coral. We're not even gonna wash our brush with our fire coral brush, we're gonna pick up some of our wicker white and we're gonna offload some of that color. So it's gonna look a little pink, but that's expected. And we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna make those sloppy X's. Mm. Did we just lose the camera there? I think we may have. Oh, there we go. Wait, oh wait, oh. the overhead is gone. Okay, so that's All okay. Right. Yeah, Hold on. Like <laughs> You guys keep going on your X's and I'll figure out what's happening. Okay, and while uh, John is helping me out here, I'll paint this way so you all can see. We're just gonna keep going with our X's. Okay, and it's gonna look something like this. And really, we're just gonna keep working on this section until we're happy with the way it looks. And don't forget, we are not gonna wash our brush, so we're gonna keep our brush dry. And if you have too much paint on your brush, then you're just gonna use a dry paper towel and just wipe off some of that excess. Sorry guys for the disruption. You get to see my smiling face in the overhead <laughs> camera for a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna go back with my regular fire coral and kind of add some more of that bright melony color. Okay. Does that look right or do we need to do it the opposite way? Looks like it just shut off again. What? Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. We will get this straight in just a second. And just keep working on it, you guys. Maybe we'll mix even some of our fire coral with our white and make kind of a light peachy color. So you can see that, you guys? Just kind of a light peach. And maybe we'll try adding a bit of that in here. Is it right side up or is it upside down? Nate, how are we doing on the overhead? Look, it, it looks like you have it in the right, um, right side up. So that's good. Still on as I can see so far. Okay, good. Okay. Is that right, better for you guys see? <laughs> yeah, let's replace that. There we go. All right, good. Awesome, sorry about that when guys. When we get into low battery mode, we didn't have it plugged in. Oh boy. Technology, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, and if you find yourself having a little bit too much paint on your uh, brush, then just like we did with paper towel, just remove a little bit with our paper towel. And maybe if you want some lighter areas, then you can use white and create, and if you want like maybe some longer strokes, then you know make bigger strokes. If you want shorter strokes, make some shorter strokes. Whatever you think your painting needs. This is a fun, loose one, you guys. So this one, it's really just all about having fun. Some longer strokes here, maybe here. Keeping in mind, we still wanna keep some of that navy space nice and open, okay? All right, you guys. And so that is our table part. So now we are going to move on to our beautiful aqua background. So I'm gonna put this brush into my water basin. And now we're gonna introduce to our palette, our aqua and our ocean view. Okay. 
Okay, so it's really up to you. We're gonna do the same exact technique we just did. You can either start with your lighter ocean view or your darker aqua. I'm gonna start with my ocean view this time. And we don't want that much paint. We're just taking a little bit because we're still wanting to have that dry brush. And we're gonna keep going. And just keep in mind too, we're gonna wanna keep this upper area navy. We're not gonna paint that, okay? We're gonna leave, leave this plain because that is where our green leaves are gonna go. We're gonna get up in these corners because our leaves won't go quite that far. Hit the edges of our canvas. Okay. You'll add a little bit more and then we'll introduce another color. So as you can see guys, uh, really the dry brushing technique creates a really subtle light um, texture on your canvas. And if you want to have a more opaque color um, on your canvas, then you can just use more paint. But since we have a dry brush tonight and we're using a little bit less paint, we get this really soft texture, which I love. And if you don't have ocean view, you can mix a little bit of your teal with your white, just kind of like we did with this bottom layer. We mixed some of our uh, fire coral with white. Okay, so we're not gonna place this into our water basin yet. Now we're gonna pick up a little bit of our teal and do the same thing. And maybe if you want to define your horizon line a little bit more, you can kind of create a sharper line, loosen it up if you want. That, that line is a little too harsh for me by offloading most of my paint and then just kind of softening it by doing the same uh, movement with my paintbrush, but with no paint on it. Okay, now let's introduce some white to our palette. Same thing as before. Or we already have one on our palette. I should say introduce white onto our brush. And just add some lighter texture. And if you find yourself having too much paint, um, then you can just remove it with your paper towel. And if you want to be more strategic and have like kind of a lighter area towards the corner, like like the upper corner, like that's where the light is shining and have the darker areas kind of down here, you can totally do that. Or you can just go with it like we are tonight and just trying to create some loose, fun texture to your painting. But this loose cross hatch method is just a fun way to add some dimension to your painting. Okay. All right, you guys, so let's move on to our face. So what we're gonna do, is, so we're gonna just first of all, go ahead and put this brush into our water basin. All right, so we're gonna pick up our chalk and we are going to dissect our vase right in half with one line, just like this. 
okay? And once you do that, you're going to do two symmetrical lines right here on either side of the line that you just made. One, two. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to connect these um, lines by making diamonds. So these longer uh, vertical lines are just gonna be our guide for this diamond pattern that we're gonna be painting here, okay? So we're just gonna create diamonds. So we're gonna go one, two, and finish the diamond three, four and just continue that all the way down. Okay, and we're gonna do that all over our base. Till we're left with something that looks like that. Are we all good? Okay, so now we are going to get um, a flat brush again, and we're going to pick up um, same technique as before. We're not going to apply a whole lot to our brush, just a little bit of our, what is this? I feel like I keep calling it wicker white. Okay, it is wicker white. Just wanted to make sure. A little bit of wicker white to our brush and offload. Okay, and we're going to do the same technique again inside the diamond and we just want to keep in um, keep our diamonds intact though okay but we're creating this loose texture inside our diamond trying our best to keep our chalk intact if it's not totally intact it is not the end of the world making sure we just get every navy space in between our diamond lines. We're applying paint, we're offloading, and we are just kind of going like this, just loosely brushing onto our, can you guys see what I'm doing? Loosely brushing onto our canvas. Still, just like before, letting some of that navy show through. Okay. So now we'll touch it up a little bit, make sure we're pleased with what we just did. And then we'll move on to a, the next step. So go ahead and you can put this um, brush into your uh, water basin. But before you do that, if you wanted to add some white marks to either your fire coral or your aqua, now is a great time to do so while you have this um, dry brush that has only been hit with the white, okay? So let's maybe add some white to our fire coral. You could use wicker white or titanium white. It's okay, either one. Yes, yeah, she, any white color will work fine. Yeah. She may have said, maybe she said titanium white. I'm not sure, but the list says wicker white, so either one will work. Yeah, I the listing does say wicker white, and I keep saying titanium white because that's what I use the most, so sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to take our one uh, half-inch flat brush, and we are going to apply some yellow ochre onto our palette. And same thing, we're not gonna pick up a whole lot of paint. We are going to pick up some paint onto our small flat brush and then offload. And now we are going to uh, remake those diamond shapes that we just made, okay? 
with our chalk. So we're going to go like this and like this. And we're making those diamond shapes again, but this time with paint. With our dry brush. Okay, so now um, on top of the yellow ochre that we just applied, we can add some white, some white mixed with yellow ochre, just to create some depth like we have been doing. You guys are pros at this now. And we are picking up some white and we are offloading to make kind of that softer, sandy, soft yellow color. I'm gonna apply a little bit more white onto my palette. And just like all the other times, once you're done with those two initial colors, wherever you see you need to add some darker colors, feel free to add some more yellow ochre. Wherever you feel like you need some lighter colors, add some more wicker white or your wicker white and yellow ochre mixture. Okay. So we're not gonna outline the vase. You totally could if you wanted to, but we're not going to. Um, if you wanted to really define the shape of your vase a little bit more, then you could uh, remove some yellow ochre like you see me doing right here and um, from your brush and apply some more wicker white and just kind of define those areas a little bit more. So your brush will have a little bit of yellow ochre on it. So just be mindful of that, but we can still mainly just use that white to kind of define some of, the, some of that vase shape a little bit more. Amy, that's a good idea. You could use treasure gold for sure if you wanted to have like a super yeah. cool metallic pop to it. I love that, Amy. That's a great idea. It definitely has a pineapple vibe. A couple of people were saying that their vase looks like a pineapple. Well, you it know. Does look, it does look a little bit like a pineapple, but don't tell Kirsten that. Right. Once you put some flowers growing out of it, then it's, you know, no longer a yeah. pineapple. It'll definitely look more vase-like. Okay, you guys. So now that we're done with our pineapple, I mean vase, we're gonna put our brush in our water basin. You didn't laugh at that joke, John? I thought, <laughs> I, thought that I, was, mean, <laughs> I thought that was a slam dunk in your eyes. I mean, it was pretty good, it was pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing we have been doing, but with our greens. So we're going to apply some clover and some pistachio to our palette. There you go. Add a couple of straws in there and make it a pina colada. That's a good idea. If you get tired, <laughs> if, you, if you can't find any florals at Michael's, you could just stick a couple yeah. straws in there at the end. <laughs> be like the most epic straw ever. Okay, so we're going to same. I hope you guys aren't bored with this technique. You shouldn't be because it's really fun and you guys are all really, really good at it by now. We're gonna do the same exact thing with our clover. So apply some clover to your brush offload and we're gonna do the same thing to this um, space that we left empty earlier.
and maybe we'll kind of go over our aqua a little bit, make it look like the leaves are really abundant and overflowing over our vase. That's a pretty look. And everywhere you want your leaves to look like they're growing. I guess not growing, but everywhere they're taking space. Okay, and once you are pleased with your clover, go ahead and highlight with your pistachio. And if you don't have any pistachio at home, just some clover and some of your wicker white is a great substitute, those two mixed together. Uh-oh, is that a pineapple comment? It's, it is. I was just thinking. It's only it adding like, more to the pineapple <laughs> mystique by putting greenery at the top. Uh-oh, well, you know, I think that just makes our painting more interesting tonight, you guys, because people will be looking at it for a really long time wondering, gosh, is that a vase or is it a pineapple? How did they get flowers to grow out of that pineapple? <laughs> or that. Either and way- And they look so three-dimensional, I can't believe it. Yeah. Okay, maybe a little bit more clover, a little bit too much pistachio there. Okay, you guys, so whenever you're pleased with that, you can go ahead and wash this brush. And now we are going to reach for our uh, very smallest brush and Let's put some more clover on our palette. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to create these beautiful palm leaves that you can see here, okay? These guys. So we are going to use our teeny tiny liner brush. And we are going to apply some clover to our liner brush and you can add a touch of water. This is finally where we're really ditching the dry brush thing. And I want you to add a touch of water to your paint to really get the paint flowing and gliding across your canvas. Folk art is so rich and creamy and that's why we love to paint with it. But um, sometimes when you're doing some fine liner work like this, it is it's just better to add a little bit of water just to get things rolling. So we're adding some water to our clover. And now we are going to start from this beautiful bush sort of deal that we just created. And we are kind of going to make a little swoop like that. It's barely visible. Do you guys see what I just did? We're just kind of making the larger stems of our palm leaves. Okay, so we're gonna have a couple going from this side maybe one coming from this side. And it's just super simple once you add a little bit of water to your paint. Can you guys see that okay? See, that's where I just did one. Yeah. And that's where I did these two. Once you add water to your paint, it's super, super easy to do. And you can either start on the outside and work your way in or start on the out inside and work your way out. It's up to you. But we're just gonna make those initial lines, okay? And now what we're gonna do is on, Growing from those lines, we are going to just make straight lines like this all the way down those initial stems that we just did. Just little smaller straight lines, okay? And we are going to do that to all of our stems. And you really probably want to add some water to your paint because it really helps things flow beautifully. Maybe if you want to, maybe you want my my lines to be a little bit longer. So we'll add some length to those guys that we did before. Okay, now let's repeat that onto the other side. And you can make it as full um, as you want.
okay? And now we are going to do the same thing with our pistachio. We're gonna add some water to our pistachio and we're gonna kind of go over those darker clover lines to add some dimension to our palm leaves. So we're going to go over that initial stem. Okay, and we are doing the same thing we just did. A little bit quicker this time since we know where we're gonna go. So we're just really here to add a highlight now. It really makes them like pop. They look 3D all of a sudden. Yeah. So that's really cool when you add the highlights. And just, you know, this is a super loose painting. So just have fun with it. If it's not perfect, it's not supposed to be perfect. Leaves are not perfect in nature. So why should they be perfect in your painting? Okay. So you can add more of those uh, babies if you want. Maybe, you know, some like this. Picking up more clover where you see you need it just to kind of fill in that stem. Oops. All right, move on to the other side, just really filling that in. And rinsing your brush when you're done. You can really rinse your brush whenever you want with that one. Okay, so with our yellow ochre already on our palette, we are going to either just want a really small flat brush for this next step, or you want a round brush. And you're gonna pick up some of your yellow ochre. Kirsten probably used a round brush for this part, but I um, prefer to use a small flat brush. So it's totally up to you. You can use a round brush, a liner brush, a flat brush, whatever you like to use to make smaller detail work with. And I'm gonna have Kirsten's painting right here just so we can all kind of see it. Well, maybe you guys can't move it. So we can all see for reference. And what we're gonna do is we're just inside our little diamonds that we've created, we are going to add some details, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little comma strokes and you can all practice on your palette paper if you want. So we'll do it together. So we're going to have a kind of, you know, we're gonna, um, let me think, how do I wanna explain this? We're gonna apply more pressure in the beginning. And then when we pick up our brush, we are going to apply less pressure. So like this, we're going to apply more pressure and then less pressure. And as you can see, we made a little comma stroke. So more pressure, less pressure when we pick up, okay? More pressure, less pressure, all right? So you can practice that if you want. And if you feel comfortable doing it along with me now, let's go ahead and do it. So what, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to make our comma strokes going from this side inward and then our right side, this side inward, okay? Nothing perfect. Just fun, inside, inward, outside, inward, okay? And with our yellow ochre, we're gonna go ahead and do that, those four little cute comma strokes in every single diamond shape. And they don't have to be perfect, you guys. And if you don't want to do the comma strokes, you can do little swirlies, you can um, you know, do polka dots, you can do zigzags. It's totally up to you. Uh, the comma strokes are super cute, but you can do whatever you like. And whatever, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you know, just have fun. Decorate your vase however you want it.
And now we are going to fill in those spaces. Um, we're gonna just wipe our brush. We're not gonna rinse it in water. You can if you want, I just don't want to. We're gonna wipe off our brush and we're gonna pick up some of our fire coral. And we're gonna go right over our yellow ochre. You can wait for this to dry a little bit more if you want, but you don't need to. Kind of like how the colors blend a little bit. Just making those little details. And after you're done with this step, you can um, add some little polka dots. You can see Kirsten did here. Little polka dots with the tip of our brush, go boop, boop, boop. We're not touching down all the way. We're going light-handed. We are just making contact with our canvas, okay? And the more pressure you apply to your canvas, the bigger the dot. So if you want a smaller dot, obviously apply less pressure, bigger dot, more pressure. So Kirsten kind of had it looking like a snowman with the biggest dot at the bottom and then three dots and they went smaller as she got uh, higher. So I kind of tried to copy that and we're left with this gorgeousness. It looks great. It looks Thanks. definitely less pineapple-y now that we've put some decoration <laughs> on there. Well, I'm so glad, <laughs> I think. Mm. Um, and you can add some white to that if you want. You can, you know, maybe even add some pistachio. That would be pretty, some ocean view, um, or you can be done. Okay, so guys, we are done with the painting portion. So don't forget uh, when you're done with the painting, we wanna go ahead and we wanna sign our canvas. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm, you can sign it with whatever color you like. I'm gonna sign mine, I think with a little bit of midnight. And since we did some brush work tonight, we learned a little bit of tips and tricks how to do that. Um, you, you know, again, want to add a little bit of water to your paint because that helps you make some very clean lines like we did with our leaves tonight. So add some uh, water to your paint and go ahead and sign your, your masterpiece. I think I'm going to stick this at Kirsten's desk so that she'll have a beautiful handmade surprise when she comes back to work. And now for the fun part, you guys, we are going to assemble our the 3D element of our 3D floral painting. So one thing I want you guys to be mindful of when you're choosing your flowers at Michael's, if you've already bought your flowers, that is totally okay and uh, good for you. But just something if you haven't yet, or if you wanna make another one of these at home, something that I always like to keep in mind is um, when I'm picking my floral arrangements, I like to have a statement flower. So I kind of can choose between this bird of paradise, although he is pretty big. He's pretty though, huh? Or you'll, you got all of you botanists at home. I know there's gotta be a ton of you. Um, you'll have to let me know what kind of flower this is. So my statement piece is gonna be this beautiful flower. And then I want you to have um, like two second place flowers. So for me tonight, it's going to be this, I think this is elephant's ear. Do you know, John? I do not know that. Okay, I'm gonna I have mean, these two beautiful ones. Okay. I can get out my phone and begin Googling the elephant ear plant and see what we come up with. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what those are. Oh, monstera leaf. There you go, see that? Okay, thank you. So um, I have my statement piece flower and then I have my two, you know, um, second place, not that they're second place, they're all beautiful. But the two flowers that just look good with it that are not as, um, you know, uh, attention grabbing as my statement flower that kind of take up a little bit of the space, but still, you know, your eye is drawn to them. I want to have two of those. And then I want to kind of have a filler flower. So in this case, it's this, um, you know, kind of palm leaf. And this is just going to fill some of the space and it's probably going to go towards my back. 
But if this weren't tropical flowers, then maybe it would be like something like baby's breath, something that will take up the space that you're not really so focused on. That's not your second place flower or your um, statement piece flower, okay? And when you ever do you do a small floral grouping like this, that's just a great thing to remember, your statement piece, um, your two second place guys, and then your filler. And someone has to show the final, so. Here you go. Bonus points if you can tell me what the nickname of the Montera deliciosa plant is. Hmm, anyone, anyone? <laughs> According to the Googler, it is the Swiss cheese plant. That's what I was thinking. Why did I say elephant ear? What plant is that? I don't, that's big old giant leaves. Oh, okay. Well, the Swiss wrong. cheese plant, a species of flowering plant native to tropical forests of southern Mexico, south to Panama. Mm, and now you know. <laughs> Thank you, John, for the, always uh, there with the helpful tips and tricks. And you know, the, mix a little botany into the class tonight. Why not? <clears throat> sure. Okay, so the next step is that we want to trim some of our um, some of our leaves, our faux flowers. So it's good to have some wire cutters. I'm pretty sure that was in the description. Um, scissors probably will not work so well for this. It's nice to just have a wire cutter. And we're just gonna trim. So um, we don't want too much space to be removed, but um, let's say that we want from the back, uh, we'll trim it about an inch, okay? And we want to have some varying height Ooh, and be careful. Um, it's gonna go flying. So, you know, close your eyes, maybe wear protective eye gear when you are trimming your flowers. Okay, maybe I'll just leave these guys, I'll tuck them, I won't cut them. So if you don't wanna cut them, you don't have to. You can just fold it like this. So maybe you'll wanna reuse it or something. And another cute thing too, if you paint a vase like this, you can switch out the flowers with the season. So maybe for the summer, it's something really tropical like this. And then winter, maybe it's some, um, Poinsettia, poinsettias, why couldn't I think of that? Okay, so let's grab our painting. And this is um, unlike our other paint nights before, we're actually going to make a hole in it, okay? So we're gonna probably cut about an inch and a half hole, not hole really, but slit with our X-Acto knife right where our, um, right at the top of our vase, okay? So be careful if you are a, um, a little one or not a little one, but if you're probably like 13 and under tonight, maybe have a parent help you with this next step. So we're gonna make a hole, a slit, so that we can fit our leaves through. So you wanna make sure that your painting is dry, obviously, before you do this, because you don't wanna ruin the beautiful art that you just created. And we're just gonna slip our plants through. So in goes our Swiss cheese plant. And we are going to arrange it however we like. We'll send him to the back, slipping them in as we go. And um, you know, you can trim your wire however, so you can make your uh, plant however tall you want it to be. We'll place him in there, beautiful. So cool, I love it. And there you go. Look at that. Look how cute. Okay, so just kind of fiddle with it until you uh, get a design that you love, okay? So, so that I can uh, just kind of finish tonight, I think we're running out of time. What you would do next to secure your beautiful faux flowers on is you, uh, we called this for some duct tape. And that's because you don't want any painter's tape or, or washi tape or anything like that. You want some pretty heavy duty tape um, just to keep it in place. And I'm actually using gaff tape because I couldn't find any duct tape, but I want you guys to use duct tape if you have it because it's really strong. And we are going to cut off a piece of tape that goes from each side. I did not cut a big enough piece. You wanna cut off a piece that goes from each side of your stretched canvas, okay? 
So we're going to lay that there. And make sure we grab onto. And maybe you can use some hot glue to kind of secure it a little bit better. But the duct tape is really going to hold it in there. Okay, so if you want to, you can totally use hot glue to help, but the duct tape is gonna be your best friend. And with that, you guys, that is our 3D tropical flowers. So I hope you guys enjoyed painting along with me tonight. We are here um, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, um, painting with Michaels and all of you wonderful people. We have a brand new painting every single Monday night with a different instructor where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. We always um, enjoy having you guys here with us tonight. We love doing it. We wanna give a big thank you to Michaels for allowing us to do this with you guys. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye guys. Bye.